first off, it's just really exciting to be here and be the media partner with amazing Comic-Con Las Vegas. I'm a huge fan of conventions, so the fact that we're joining forces is just super special right off the bat. And then on top of that, I still can't believe I'm sitting here about to moderate a panel with the Green Ranger. Back in the day when I was super little, I was allowed to watch anything I wanted whenever I wanted, and no surprise, I had a lot of friends who couldn't do things like that. So I vividly remember being really little on the elementary school bus, sitting there and a, pretty much giving a play-by-play -play of the latest Power Rangers episode to everybody around me. So to be sitting in the seat right now and to be doing what I do and have that memory is just, something else, and I got a lot of questions for him right now, so I'm not gonna waste any more time. Guys, give a big round of applause to Jason David Frank. Thank you guys. Man, it's morphin' time. It's uh, definitely morphin' time here in Las Vegas. I appreciate you guys, thanks for coming. Jimmy. So Jimmy, what you're saying is if they wanna come in, to stand is what you're saying, or no? Well, I, is we do have more chairs. Oh yeah, so. if you guys don't man, we got some people in the back. Maybe we can squeeze in, get a little comfortable. You know, don't hold that pretend seat like I do at the movie theaters. Thanks, Jason. When Thanks, someone guys. comes, and says, "Is hey, someone sitting there?" And I'm like, "Yeah, my yeah." Do, where is do my, what these yeah. guys are doing so, right here. Raise your hand if you have a seat next to you that's open. If you guys want to sit down, come sit down. <laughs> They're like, well, "We just rather watch." Wants to come. <laughs> Fine. Then stand out. No, I'm just kidding. We tried. We tried. All right. All righty. So we have a lot to talk about right now because yeah. I also explored a lot of the new stuff that you've been working on. But it's an anniversary for Power Rangers right now that makes me feel extremely old. So I want to go back to the very, very beginning for you because I love hearing about. If you feel old, how does that make me feel? That's not nice to say. <laughs> or kind that's of like a, a really. That's like a really skinny girl, and, and the big overweight girl orders a cake, and the skinny girl says, "No thanks. I'm on a diet." Makes them feel bad. Make me feel bad. I am old. No, I'm well, now, now I'm never going to say that when I order a cake. You know, you make me feel... Well, no, exactly. <laughs> I know. It's okay. Bring out the cakes! I wish. That sounded good, but we don't have none. What a tease. Way back in the day yes. for auditioning for Power Rangers, do you remember what you exactly had to do for that? Yes, I do. Um... It's the 25th year... Or no, not 25th. When the movie. I just saw something. What, 25... 23rd. Today, on this day, the movie was released 23 years ago in the, in the, in the uh, movie theaters, right? 23 years ago. Well, I got the script, um, and uh, <clears throat> I read all these lines. I had no clue what the Rangers, I had no clue what the word Zordon was. I had no clue at all. I went in there, did my scene, and then uh, I did martial arts, and that's pretty much after the, the martial arts. It was, I, I'm comfortable doing karate. <clears throat> my friend Tony over there, Hey, Tony, he's, uh, <clears throat> he's been a student of mine for years, I mean, years, way back then, way back in the days. And we're walking around the convention halls and remembering, oh, we used to go to tournaments and we used to do this and that. Not Comic Cons, but karate tournaments. So when I did karate, I was very comfortable. I was like a national rated competitor and it was easy. It was like, okay, do the lines. Okay, great. Now demonstrate. And that's where it was like, ah, choo -choo 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 -choo. and they were like, can you come back tomorrow? Literally. And uh, I said yes, and I went back, and there was 10 girls there. Uh, they asked me to pick out one girl and teach her a routine. So I picked out Twee and taught her a martial arts routine. And then the next thing, welcome, sir. Come on in. Find a seat. There's a seat. Raise your hand if you have a seat over there. There you go. He's got all those options. Uh, you're welcome. At least you listened, some people in the back. <laughs> I love you all in the back, too, though. So then I got the role, and uh, Twee became the Yellow Ranger. 
So. That's awesome. And, you know, we're, we're here at a convention, and really any convention you go to, you're constant, constantly seeing fans celebrating these properties that have existed for such a long time. But then you've got all these TV shows and movies that are trying to start new brands yeah. that basically have that same sense of dedication. So what is it to you about Power Rangers, especially being on the con circuit? And I imagine you've heard stories from people. So what is it that gave Power Rangers this kind of longevity? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I know a lot of people say, I like to thank the fans, but if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be where we're at today. And that's the truth. You'll hear it, <clears throat> sorry, I just got that morning <clears throat> sound. Um, you'll hear it from a lot of people, actors, fighters. Thank you to my fans, thank you to my fans. When I say that, I really don't wanna thank you, I wanna show you to my fans. It's kinda like everyone says I got big things going on. I'm so blessed to be here, thank you for my fans. But then when you look at them, what are they doing to get fans? What are they doing to keep their fans motivated for me? I hit Instagram, I listen to the stories, I try to deposit in your uh, emotional bank account so you have favors. If there's anything I could ever do for you, and I get them all the time, sometimes people are depressed or happy or Power Rangers got you through a really dark, depressing you know, childhood to the, I had a perfect childhood, nothing was ever wrong with me, it's fine. But we all got through childhood and we all grew up on what we, what we grew up on. And Power Rangers was something that you guys grew up on you're all sitting there and we're turning to kids again. And that's the idea about Comic-Cons is when you come to Comic-Con, you, you get to live your, your childhood and not have people in your life go, what do you do? Comic-Cons are stupid. If you ever had those people like, why you waste your time? I can't believe you go to those things. I've heard it a lot. I liked Wolverine and I had a Wolverine shirt and I learned how to fight and no one ever made fun of Wolverine again. So with that kind of mentality, because we, we just had a, a new Power Rangers movie hit theaters, yeah. and I was a pretty big fan of that, but it didn't catch on enough, sadly, for reasons I can't even explain, to get that second movie. And I wanted to see that Green Ranger so, so badly. So like, let's say you were in control of the future of the franchise. Like, what are they missing? What do they need to do to keep it going? Well, Hasbro is now the... The, the owner of the property, you know, so Hasbro owns it now. And, and with Saban Entertainment, Haim is still, you know, uh, Haim is still mentoring them and stuff like that. But there's no secret behind the brand. What I would do for me as an owner is, number one, I think there's three Ps in anybody's life. You got the purpose, and you have to have the passion, and then later on comes profit. But you can't worry about profit, because if you don't have the purpose and the passion, you're not going to get anything. So for me, it was never about profit. These shows, you can get something to the table. You don't have to, I don't care. The promoter, don't pay me to be here. He does not pay me to be here at any shows. But listen, there's a lot of people that want to get stuff signed, do all that stuff, great. But for me, it's about passion and it's about purpose. So if I own the brand, number one, I'm gonna look at who's got the passion and the purpose because I ain't giving you profit because it needs to be the passion and the purpose for the fans. Who really likes their job? That's the first thing I would ask about Power Rangers. Power Rangers, step forward. Other Power Rangers, step back. I, I, can't, I can't handle the, we weren't paid good enough, we weren't stopped. Okay, there's people that work in it like these, these places that they would love to get out of that. You know what I mean? As an actor, as growing up, someone said the other day about me, and Tony could verify, I've, I made a lot of money on the show. I, I, I did karate schools, I bought my house in cash in Valencia, I made a lot of money. So sometimes when people say they weren't paid enough, you're on the wrong business. Don't try to be rich and famous. Live your pa passion and purpose. Because we all have, I mean, passion and purpose. You know, Tony's great with kids. He, he, Tony can teach anybody here, and he can get the whole convention in line and teach you guys martial arts. But that's how I train my guys. And I look for purpose and passion. He knows what will happen if he came up. So oh, I need more money, get out of the school. Don't teach, you know, I'd say that. If you don't want pur purpose and passion, get out. Don't be my teacher no more. What do you mean? That's what we need to have in life. So if I own the brand, Power Ranger Step Forward, who has passion, and let's move forward. Because I can't force anyone to do so. I've been out here longer than any other ranger at these Comic Cons, and that's why I have the fan base, is because I was here when nobody cared about the brand. And I'm still here, and it happens to be that people care. And next year, if no one cares about the brand, I'll still be here. Because I care about you guys, that's the idea, right? So. With all of that in mind, because I'm sure a lot of people out here are probably fans of all different kinds of brands, and especially being on the internet and talking about something that you love. Right now, some are experiencing some extreme negativity or toxicity. If you don't love something the way that somebody else does, you don't get attacked. But 
I've never felt that amongst the Power Rangers community. You've clearly built up a great community for yourself, too. So how do we change this in your mind to spread that love to more brands? I, I, it's interesting because yesterday I, I had a similar question that I never really thought about before. And um, we're not, we're not in, a, in a universe. We're not in DC universe. We're not in the Marvel universe. I'm not in the Valiant universe, although I was Bloodshot and Vin Diesel's playing Bloodshot now, but I'm just saying I was the first. So anyway, we don't belong to a universe and that's what makes us so neutral is that automatically if you're a DC collector and you don't like DC, you have someone to say, I don't like DC, I'm a Marvel fan. Football players, you know, my friend Marquette's on the Raiders, now he's with the Broncos, and automatically you have 50% of the people, people that don't like you. Power Ranger brand is neutral because we don't belong in a universe. Now we have the Boom Comics, we have the Shattered Grid. Yes, we're crossovering, thank you. It was, who's seen the Shattered Grid? Man, it's on my YouTube page. I don't even know if we have a clip here. I, I thought we should, but uh, anyway, um, it's on my uh, YouTube page, JDF FFN, and uh, there, they can roll clips here or no? If we had a clip or no? I think we might have had to have prepared that in advance. Oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> but anyway, it's well worth checking um, out when you guys okay. get a chance. So check it out on JDF FFN. Uh, the point to that, that's when viral 15, 16 million views. Saban, Hasbro. They all want to do a series, and I'm going to, get, I'm going to answer this question and get to your other one because I have ADD. So in December, we're doing the Soul of the Dragon, the Green Ranger solo book, okay? It's kind of like the old man Logan. It's, uh, it's something I wanted for a very long time, and it's called the Soul of the Dragon that's coming out in October. Um, so with the, uh, with the Shattered Grid, and see, I even forgot what I was here. <laughs> okay, but uh, the, the idea behind that is we have our own, you know, own universe, and... Uh, we don't get blamed for liking other stuff. Power Ranger fans can cross promote and never get canceled out. We could be a DC fan, Power Ranger fan. Power Rangers was in the Marvel, Hamilton, Marvel. Then we went to the DC crossover, but Power Rangers in its own brand now. And that's the, uh, that's the cool thing. So to be a superhero now that everybody knows is great. But back then, nobody knew what Power Ranger was. Everybody almost called me silly for doing the show. And as silly as it was, I believed in it. And when Dino Thunder, when I did Dino Thunder, I could not, thank you. I couldn't get one interview for Dino Thunder. I was with the network, I was with Disney, we could not get one interview. Going on tour was one interview in New York, but I believed in it. You hear a lot of songs, people singing or rapping about songs, about their record that's a big hit now, but never was a big hit. It just takes time. And this generation that we're doing, we needed to develop content for this generation. So if I was doing the movie, I, I would give you a, a taste of your childhood. Like, you know what I mean? Luke Skywalker and Luke Skywalker, Han Solo. Like, you gotta give them what they grew up with. So that's what I would have done different on the movie. But if we're not out. Hasbro's got big plans for the movie. So, so you're, you're happy with the Hasbro switch because I'm, I'm super into tradition. So I think, oh, Power, Power Rangers is Saban. You can't separate the two. But also the idea of Hasbro, let's say, having the resources to keep it going, to get it out there to even more fans is still really exciting. Yeah. It's funny to, to keep things going. Power Rangers is going. You know what I mean? Like we're not rebranding it or re... It's, it's actually... The, the, the web series, the Green Ranger series, the stuff that I want to do to entertain this fan, to give content to this fan, you're right. Hasbro <clears throat> has some good things going. I did Saban, I did Disney, I did Saban, now I'm going to Hasbro. I was the only guy that's really stuck there through the thick and the thin, and I've never ran from who I was and who I am. That's the difference. You won't see me now and go, oh, look at JDF, now he's promoting this. Always promoted it when I had one person in a QA. and a It didn't matter, and that's how we teach class. We teach class the same with one person or 10,000 people. The energy does not switch. And that's all I've been doing for years and years. So Hasbro has some good things that in store for everyone. I'm going to San Diego Comic-Con to uh, promote them. And it was like, hey, Jason, can you come and uh, we'll pay you X amount of dollars. I said, no, Hasbro, I'll come for free. Where do you want me to be? Uh, Thursday, 10 o'clock, 11, media. So I'm here to kind of support the transition with Hasbro. Hasbro does a lot of good content. I think they, they got good toys too. So, uh, you know, 
I think it's going to be a good switch. Can you talk a little bit about just the con lifestyle? Because I've been to tons of them, but it wasn't until last year when I went to my very first Star Trek convention and spent a significant amount of time on the floor at the autograph booths that I realized not only how much of a strong bond there was between the stars of the show and the fans that come out to see them, but also amongst the people in the show. They have their own community within the circuit. Do you guys have that too? Yeah, we do. Uh, you know, the good thing about... <clears throat> Man, I can't even... The good thing about these shows is that we all come together and we love one thing. Not just Power Rangers, but in general, just the genre, the books, the movies, the, the toys. And then some people just come here just to meet certain celebrities. But I work really hard on making one thing. It's hard. I'm on tour all the time. And this is my philosophy. When I'm asked a question, you have to make it new so I can answer a question, like what's your favorite color, what's your favorite ranger? I think I see it out here a lot where people just, oh my God, I already answered that question. So I have to kind of like trick my mind to, to answer you sincere. And uh, you know, what I do is I try to treat the last person almost better than the first. Because when you're at a Comic-Con and you'll see today, yesterday I was signing a lot. I would not want to be the last guy in line to get treated with less energy. So I try to treat the last just like the first. And, and this is an experience that I wish I had with some of my childhood uh, celebrities that unfortunately the, the, the times and the opportunities I've had to meet them were terrible, but that's not gonna deter me from, from learning what not to do from these guys with my fans. And I've been consistent. I've done more shows than anyone. I got a huge crowd. I always do media, I always love y'all. I wanna make sure that you guys have a great experience, not just me, but with amazing Comic-Con. It doesn't matter if you're not here to see me. Someone can walk by and I want you guys to experience this awesome community that's growing so fast that a lot of people on the outside of the world really don't understand. A lot of people say, how can a TV show change that person's life? Well, how can a music change your life? Like, you ever sit there and a song comes on and you're like, oh, man, that brings me back to this moment in life. So hopefully with the show, it brings you back to good moments, bad moments that you struggled with, and then you can look at the bad moments that you struggle with and realize it ain't that bad because you're here today listening to the message, you know? And that's a good thing. And uh, you know, it's like, we, I just learned a little bit about life, but this is a very fast growing community, but I like doing cons like Jimmy the promoter and everyone here. I really like passionate people for comic cons. So you guys can leave with like feeling good about the show. And I always say, share your feelings on Instagram, express yourself, tag pictures, People don't do that. We're so fast to tag negative. Oh, you know, I'm coming to Amazing Comic Con. I had to stand outside in the sun for five minutes in the shade, we ran out of shade. You guys need to fix that. But people don't take the time to say, excuse me, sir, uh, can I talk to your manager? What happens if you go, well, everything okay? No, no, it's fine. Let me speak to your manager. Manager comes out, say, uh, she's an awesome waitress. And she did a really good job. Everyone's, thank you. Nobody does that. No, everybody says bad things. So my fans, clicking pages, sharing positivity, that's why people are saying, how is your page so positive? It's because that's what we do. And then when something's negative, we just, choo, choo, done. You don't want to be friends? Choo, 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 done. Block them. It's so refreshing to hear this kind of perspective. If only it would just bleed out to every single TV show and movie out yeah. there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Bloodshot now because you brought it up and you know that I know the person who shot Ninjak. Uh -huh. And so Joey Rasool works for Collider Video and he was the cinematographer on that web series and yeah. he shot the crap out of that short. It's yeah. incredible. So with everything going on with this Bloodshot movie right now, because you know we'll cover a Bloodshot story, oh, Vin Diesel is in talk, so-and-so is yeah. added to the cast, and I still see comments that say, Jason David Frank is our Bloodshot. So. What goes through your mind when you see that? Is it like, yeah, that's my role? Yeah, it, it, you know, in the beginning, I worked so hard, and I, I could do, like, a survey now and prove the whole world how, even before this, like, I'm a comic book collector. And if you're a comic book collector, and raise your hand, and you don't have to say this, but who collects Valiant Comics? Very small fan base here. Valiant is a very small industry compared to Marvel or DC. So when I got the role, nobody, there's nobody cosplaying as, 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 uh, as um, Bloodshot around here. Nobody, very rare. So I, I, I promoted it and we did it with Bat in the Sun and it looks amazing and went to 
it was going to be released, and then we had some issues with some studios. It looked really good, and we didn't know if it was going to be released, and then it was released on comicbook.com for a week. And the Valiant fans and my fans were like, man, we need this series even longer, so then they allowed it to go for like six months. So I worked so hard, two years. Bloodshot, blood who? Bloodshot, what is that? Are you a Smurf? Are you Punisher? Or what are you? You know, Bloodshot, blood, hashtag JDF Bloodshot. So yeah, it was the first one, and then you find out they're spending, you know, $100 million on a movie, and you're just cut like that, which is fine, because Vin Diesel has a huge fan base. But I kind of felt a little like, ugh. And then I felt good, and I had to put a positive perspective, thinking no matter what's gonna happen to Vin Diesel, because he just posted, they're going in production, and I know the CEO and all that, so I'm hoping to hopefully do something on that movie. But you just gotta be positive and think, I brought the world bloodshot for the very first time. I was the first person to ever film any scene, like with Joey, on bloodshot. And I'm a professional martial artist. I'm sure the movie will look great. Vin Diesel can get doubled, or he'll do some of his own stuff. But I was a little hurt in the beginning, but now I'm okay with it, because I'm glad they picked bloodshot out of all the Valiant characters that nobody knows. And then they're gonna, either it's gonna be a hit or it's not. And that's what we went with Power Rangers. Either it was gonna be a massive hit or it wasn't. Movies are expensive to make. Our movie 23 years ago, we only spent like 17 million on it. And we made almost close to 100 million. This movie cost 120 million to make. It made like 130, 140 million. So we were actually in better positions back in 95. Really expensive to make movies nowadays. And we're so picky on this stuff. We see something and we're like, oh, that could have been better. It's like, we spent millions of dollars on that. In the Power Ranger movie, they spent 120 million, and the most applauses they got was when me and Amy showed up. Yeah! And every director was like, can they clap when Big Zords come out? Like, the money-making stuff, and I was like, that's who you should have put in the movie more. Maybe some of the other Rangers, too, and tied in a universe, but. You yeah. shot a little more than what we actually saw in that yeah. movie, though, right? Yeah. What, what happened in that I, scene? I did the first cameo with long hair. I grew my hair out, and I didn't think I was gonna be in the movie. I just did it and just, like, spoke to the universe and was like, okay, they're like, why are you growing your ponytail out? Then, then the movie stuff happened. We shot the first film, or the first cameo. I didn't see Amy and really didn't make sense, really. A little disappointing showing up on set and kind of being an extra, but I was happy to be part of it. Um, but I have a huge social media fan base. So when me and Amy went out there, we had to be like on a, like uh, NDA, you know, like no, we couldn't tell no one we were out there because a lot of my projects I have now are on NDAs and uh, Someone watched Flashpoint or something in Canada. Or it was, and someone came up and said, oh my God, that's Amy. And, we, and I was thinking, oh God, I hope they don't recognize me. So I'm putting my head down the whole time. And I'm not looking at the guy. And he's like, excuse me, sir. I was like, yeah. He's like, can you take a picture of this? I was like, oh yeah, no problem, bud. Let me take a picture for you. Hey, thanks. And they're like, bye, Amy. And I was like, thank God. Because if we were seen together, the whole movie would have been ruined. Um, so, But uh, it was a good experience. Fast. I went back twice. Um, yeah, I'm, but I'm looking forward to either doing a Green Ranger series or a Lord Dracula series, to be honest, because I, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's right up the age group of what we need to get right now. Not, not, nothing rated R. You can do something really clean. Bloodshot, I can't do nothing about that. People are like, Jason, I thought you were a rated R guy. Yeah, I accepted the role Bloodshot, and that's the name. What do you want me to do? Cancel out all the blood? So you don't think Power Rangers could ever have a life in an R-rated zone? Because you know now we're always talking about, oh, make it R-rated and put it on Netflix or something like that. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. Like sometimes Deadpool pushes the limits of like going into the X-Men because that's my childhood. It's like, yeah, X-Men, X-Factor. So I'm like, pushes the fine line. I don't think it's necessary yet at this point. The only way to reboot something is when it disappears away from the kids on Nickelodeon. It needs to be gone for a good five, ten years. And then when you could redo it, then you can. I just don't see, you could do something really cool, like we did with Bat in the Sun, and the superpower beatdowns. I'm working with Bat in the Sun again Monday and Tuesday for something that's gonna be really huge for the whole genre community, uh, comics and, and fans. Um, and uh, so anyway, it's gonna be good. So I'm working with Bat in the Sun again. So as far as R rated, I don't know. Sometimes you don't need that stuff, I guess. You know, and I, I think my instructor said something very clear to me. I had all these tattoos, and uh, he said, let me ask you something. Can those tattoos get you more students? I don't, know. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe not. He said, can your earrings, if you're wearing earrings, will someone on the street come in and go, oh, dude, I want to sign up because you got nice earrings? I said, probably not. He said, but can you lose students that you have tattoos? 
I, I actually lost students before because of the way I look. And earrings too, so I just made it clean cut where I just wear, you know, don't, you know, uh, tattoos or earrings. So you'll lose people. You won't, you'll lose people for those reasons. But no one ever walks out of a movie and says, I wish they said the F word more. We walk out and going, oh my God, I was with my daughter and son and the F bombs were everywhere. So it's not necessary. I think uh, we can make something really good. And uh, it's going to be many moons from now if you're going to see something rated R. I wanted to ask you a little bit about the teaching because I'm super into sports and I was very into karate as a kid and I definitely link that to my love of things like Power Rangers. So what's with your school right now? Is it all virtual? No, 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 not at all. Shoot, I wouldn't even want to be in a virtual school. I don't, first of all, uh, Rise of Sun Karate Schools on Texas, uh, Los Angeles area, Valencia, East Coast, one of my instructors in the East Coast. We don't, you know, we never charge testing fees. I mean, that's just something we don't do at our school. And years and years, I still have not changed who I was. I mean, our testing, black belt tests are eight to 12 hours, like stuff we can't talk about. Uh, really hard, hardcore tests for kids and adults. Um, and we're proud to, you know, have a certain handful of black belts that I could truthfully say, hey, these are the guys I can depend on. So we're not just a corporation just to push people through belts. It takes six to eight years to reach a level of black belt. Nothing wrong with testing fees. I just don't want to feel obligated. Um, so I started an online virtual reality called trainmejdf.com for one reason. I wanted to see if I could teach Skype. And it was very weird because at that time we didn't, you know, it was just, I wanted to see if I can actually teach someone. So I had a few students I was testing on. And uh, this kid loved, oh, I, I didn't know he loved tra training. He would show up in his garage and he'd wait. And then I'd go on the screen, hey man, what's going on? So I trained him and he had four lessons, but he was, he dealt with depression. He ended up taking his life. And his mom called and I was like, man, I'm so sorry to hear about your son. I only done like four lessons with them. And she said, he loved you. He loved you. We want to like bury him on all your, you know, your Jesus didn't tap, your Power Ranger stuff. And I, oh man, I was like, I'm so sorry to hear it. I said, I, I didn't think your son really liked the classes because she goes, no, no, he ran there early, half hour early, but he showed no emotions at all. And the class meant so much to him that it took just a little amount of my time. And I probably would have changed the talk up a little bit. I probably would have said, how you doing today? Let's not work a jab. You know, I would have blended it a little bit. So I just started the online training class because there are people that can't train with me that want to be a part of the training, you know what I mean? So they just go online and it just, you don't get a black belt online or anything. It's just a, a little introduction to karate to get you induced, you know, introduced, in, uh, introduced into karate so you can sign up at another karate school. So it's like a supplemental tool that you use just to see if you have one thing, discipline. We all lack discipline. I will not want to buy a DVD on TV because it looks cool and you get it and it goes under your bed. The bottom line. Let's do a workout video. No. The guys that are filming the workout videos are just all liars to you because there's no way they could be like. And the camera pass and then the camera goes away. Okay, uh, take two. Come on. And, the, and you're looking, you're like, there's no way I could, that could be done. So you look for the camera cuts. So I want to just introduce this program just to see if you have discipline. Class is a race. No one there to tell you. So I kind of did it for him. There's a lot of people that might be dealing with depression that might, all they might have and can never get out of the house is maybe online stuff. YouTube content, training. Some people never leave the house. And uh, some people deal with a lot of stuff that I've gone through and anxiety and depression and, and uh, you know, not being around people. And that's why I think my fans like me is because I'm normal. I don't pretend I'm nothing else. I, we all have issues, our attitudes, my moods, all that. We're all the same. If you're the guy that says, I don't have no problems, then you're the guy that needs to leave church that says I never sin. Because that's the guy that probably does all the sinning. It's the truth. We're not perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's where, uh, that's where community and hobby comes in, too. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big part of your yeah. life. I mean, even right now, I'm not doing karate. I'm very into CrossFit, though. And just having this community that I get to go back to pretty much every single week for two years now, it, it definitely changes your mind and your attitude. Your mind. That's the biggest thing, what you just said, is your mind. I'm not all into, like, you don't have to get all chiseled and fit. When I say fitness, it has nothing to do with what you look like. Fitness. Healthy mind. And I need a lot more healthy mind in my life. I need to keep feeding my brain of stuff. And this is how I do it. Talking, motivating, talking to you that I can get motivated. So it's a, it's a mindset. It's not about how chiseled you look and people, I can never lose weight. I get people to do that all the time, but we need to change our thought process. We need to 
We need to feed our brains with things like this and, and get on the right track of being disciplined and having the right choice, especially for our kids. Say no to drugs and there's so much stuff out there. It's, it's, it's harder for, for them nowadays because they got texting. I wouldn't even have to go to the command center to see Zordon. I could just look at my Apple Watch. We didn't have Apple Watches back then. We were high tech. We were talking through watches. Whoa, is that going to be a reality? Yep. Now I could just Skype or FaceTime Zordon. I wouldn't even have to go nowhere. Think about it. Come to the right command center. Now. Why? I don't want to go to the command center. What do you want? Same thing. A floating head, floating head. What's the difference? It's true. So technology's changed. We would have been a lot more lazier. And if we knew we were close to Gotham, we would have called the uh, Angel Grove police and got the Gotham police on us and said, hey, take care of these guys. Had no clue we're next to Gotham. That's a very fair point. And yeah. extreme sports have also changed quite a bit. You probably know where I'm going with this. Yeah. So our buddy Joey, he said, you got to go online. You got to watch this video of Jason breaking boards while skydiving because there's very little in this world I won't do. Like yeah. I will jump out of planes. I broke a board as a kid. But do you just wake up one morning and say, I want to combine two things that I like right now and you just go do it? Kind of. I mean, I kind of got that weird personality. I make these videos and I think, how do I even come up with that stuff? My mind just going everywhere. I want to break boards, wanted to skydive, wanted to do a world record. I didn't even care if there was an existing record, who breaks records. I just wanted to go out and skydive and do karate. And the only thing I came up with was, okay, let's skydive and break boards, which I'll teach you how to break boards in a little bit. But I think we should open the mic for just a few questions if you don't mind. Right? Absolutely. You guys okay with that? Cool. If you guys have a question, Oh, thanks. If you guys have a question, see Tony up here, and then we're going to teach you to break a board a little bit later. I'm, I'm down for yeah. that. I'll never say no. So if you guys want to ask a question, you can line up right now. We sure, also sure. have a very special gift for you guys from McFarland Toys. If you line up and ask a question right now, Doreen over there has some stuff to give away to you guys. So we're going to get into it. Okay, no more questions. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next year, okay? Oh my God. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You got to make the question short, though. He's got a long, he's got, he's going to question me on a bunch of power range stuff I don't have the answers to. You're more knowledgeable than me, so make it easy for me. Something really easy. Okay, I gotcha. Um, I know that uh, I've seen your post about the Gear Ranger thing and also the Kamara and Ichigo. Have you watched any other, like, uh, Tokusatsu relatable series such as See, Kamara you put me on the spot again. He already asked me that. You know, you know I'm going to say no, but Guyver. I have a couple director friends. Steve Wang's a friend of mine, and I'd really like to see Guyver remade. I think Guyver was super cool. Gavin, you mean? And the two director friends, they'd love to do it. The Meza brothers, Steve Wang. It's a licensing issue with, with, uh, in Japan. But like, what favorite Super Sentai have you seen so far? I, I can't even answer that question. Ah, OK. Green uh, Ranger? What's up, buddy? All right. It's about the 90s movie from 23 years ago. It, back when they had the White Ranger in the 90s, what would happen if it was the Green Ranger given into the White Ranger in the movie instead? Would, how would that have changed the outcome? For it turning in from the Green Ranger to the White Ranger? In the movie instead of the show. Oh, the costumes were cool in the movie. Like, uh, what would happen if it was the Green Ninja Jetty and the Dragons were in the movie instead of the White Tigers? Were? What would happen if they combined it? Go check out Shattered Grid, Lord Draken. Like, would, your... would, would have changed the outcome of the old movie? Probably. But we got to stick to the script. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, do you ever um, uh, like talk to anyone from the cast of Dino Thunder recently sometimes? or? I talk to Jeff and Kevin most of the time. I, oh. I really enjoy Dino Thunder. I yeah. like being a doctor. Yeah, that was the, my favorite Power Ranger series ever. Dino it had all the there. toys and all the stuff. It's like, I wish someone would say, is there a doctor in the house? Then I can go, and then I can try, and then I can say, sorry, I'm just a doctor on TV. I'm not a real doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, until then, is there a doctor in the house? That is me, Dr. Oliver. Can you help me? Unfortunately, no, I can't. <laughs> but I could try. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank, uh, you, buddy. thank you, Thank you. They have prizes or gifts or something they get? Yeah, or? we do. Dorian right okay. there has them covered. A friend of mine online wants me to ask you, what's the weirdest question you've ever been asked and what's the answer to it? Probably yours. 
No one's ever, no one's ever asked me that before. So I'm going to give it to your friend. What's up? I got to make it quick. What's up, Dude, Jason? you're going to poke your other eye out. Careful. I, I know. I, I can't see. I had surgery. Okay. Careful um, there. I just want to know, you know, you started out as a bad guy, and then Shattered Grid, you became, you know, like a bad guy again. Like, how does that feel being, like, starting out bad, becoming good, doing so much good, and then, like, ending up a bad guy again? I think it's good. A lot of people that watch Shattered Grid say, oh, I would never believe that. I don't believe Tommy could be a bad guy. I started as a bad guy. And you have to understand the timeline. You ever read those books that have two endings? Like you read and you want to read the other ending? Well, the timeline to that was, okay, evil Tommy showed up. He still had a girlfriend. He was still evil. He went to, you know, they tried breaking the spell. He never broke the spell. He didn't want to go to the good. So he went with Rita. That's Draken. Never became good. Went with Rita. Ended up eliminating Rita and Zed and getting the title Lord. Then he become Lord Draken. I like it because it's not Tommy. I've been Tommy my whole life. It's like, I am Lord Draken. Couldn't even pronounce it. It was Draken, Draken. It's confusing. Potato, potato, whatever. But it's Draken. That's how you pronounce it. So it was actually, it was actually good to play that role and, and uh, do it the way I thought Draken would play it. Not like under a spell, but he's just so like, he just owns this dimension and he's going after every other ranger. So it's fun being evil. I just, I have to ask this, because uh, I know what mine is, I know what ours are, but uh, what was your favorite season, what was your favorite outfit, and all that? Well, when I was in high school, I never wanted to wrestle, because I didn't want to be in spandex. <laughs> That's the truth. And I should have wrestled, because I could have used it, and then I got stuck in spandex. <laughs> so, Mighty Morphin, hands down, the original, showing up. If you're up here seeing what you guys see, like I just see a bunch of lights, right? It's kind of like, so this perspective of standing up here is different. I remember going on set, stepping onto a set like this and just looking at the lights and cameras. And I was like, man, this is, I really like this. I love this feeling of acting. And then I leaned on the command center to relax. And the whole thing was on wheels. <laughs> Everything was fake. And I was like, man, they're like, careful. That's a set, son. And I was like, oh, are you kidding me? All these things are fake. Like the buttons don't even work. And then Zordon's a green screen. I don't even know what he looks like. Don't worry. We'll put it in there. And so I had to learn to kind of like, this was fake. So, but it was, it was Mighty Morphin and I enjoyed it. The wings, the it did not match. It was awesome. Japanese footage, American footage, wings, Japanese, American. I think I'm going to date myself a little bit with this one. You said, you said good reboots take about 10, 5, 10, 15 years away. Does that mean we're due for a VR Troopers reboot anytime soon? Uh, well, you, could re you could reboot VR Troopers. Yeah, not a lot of people, I don't think, seen it. I started on Power Rangers. I left as a Green Ranger. We, we ran out of Japanese footage. I went to Cybertron. I sold that show worldwide based off the America's most famous Ranger, Green Ranger, Jason Frank. It's buy, buy, buy. We sold it everywhere. And then they said, everybody at the network, kids are going crazy around the world. They're writing in saying they're not eating, not going to school. Do we need to bring you back before we get lawsuits? So then I went back as the White Ranger. So I would definitely see Cybertron. You could do that. Nobody really knows that. I mean, VR Troopers. I think I was one of the all four kids that watched it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he's like, I'm number two. I know. There's like one, two. Three. There's your three fans. Thank, Thank you, you VR Trooper fans. And Beetleborg. Beetleborg. What's your favorite um, Power Ranger episode? Um, the, I, I mean, I love Shattered Grid, don't count, but uh, Forever, no, Forever Red was good too. But, uh, but Steve wasn't in it. That was kind of rude to not invite Steve. Uh, the Dino Thunder, God, I can't even think. What is the, she's uh, uh, Fighting Spirit. Okay. Fighting Spirit, where I had to fight myself, and then there, was no, there was no turbo. But now in the book, is turbo so we're gonna you know i go through all the the uh the book that's coming out in october now has turbo in it okay so it's cool finally thanks all these names in my head i'm a soul the dragon this is the dragon's door i mean you're so confused right if you're a ranger and you're the green ranger and you know the white ranger has a saba you know the green ranger has the dagger so like when you're in the middle of war sometimes you forget because you know we all forget this stuff so when you go out and you're like do, 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 and Saba, and you're like mouth to mouth. You're like, sorry, Saba, I thought you were the flute. It gets really uncomfortable, you know? Like, <laughs> do, 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 Saba? My bad. Anyway, 
So really, I'm just kind of curious. Are you going to open any more Rising Suns? Like maybe one here in Vegas or? Uh, I, I mean, I'd like to. I'm just doing the online stuff. I really would like to go worldwide with a good franchise. I don't want to like undersell. That's like, you know, I was talking to, to Jenna about In-N-Out. You know what I mean? Like I knew like the first In-N-Out guy by our house. I was eating the first In-N-Out. That's not public. It's all private owned. And they still got good quality burgers. They can go worldwide if they want. They just won't go public. So I want to make sure I get a good brand that represents me to go outside. And if someone had to protect themselves, they can. I don't want to put a stamp of approval on someone that just to buy their rank. That's something I don't want to do. So I'd love to. I used to train in Vegas with Master Tati. So I used to come down here, but he's now all the way in Thailand. So it's a little bit further of a trip. Thank you. Oh boy, I'm really nervous. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I, I just before I get to the question, I just want to say that you're my childhood hero, and I watched you ever since I was a kid. And Thank I you, love buddy. the White Ranger. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask, um, which episode of season two was your favorite? Uh, well, like I said, Mighty Morphin in the beginning. I enjoyed doing the Mighty Morphin. I enjoyed Dino Thunder going back. The only difference between Mighty Morphin and Dino Thunder, nobody knew what Mighty Morphin was. Everybody knew what Power Rangers was when I went back as Dr. Oliver. So going on set, everyone's like, oh my God, we get to work with Jason. This is Tommy Oliver. Tommy's coming back. And then when I did the movie, no matter what they were doing or the grip guys, everyone was like, oh, dude, Jason and Amy Joe's here. You know, they were so excited. They grew up being fans. So that felt good going on set, actually be known who you are. And I guess to have a cameo, you do have to be a celebrity somewhat, I guess, to have a cameo. But um, it was fun. But Mighty Morphin. Okay. Hey. What's up, buddy? Um, so my question is, uh, in the Dino Thunder episode, when you have to fight... The White Ranger and the Red Zeal Ranger. That and the Fighting Green Spirit Ranger. one. Yeah. yeah. How, how was that? Did you have a lot of fun doing that and fighting all the Rangers in the different, like, areas, like in the desert and stuff? Like, how was that? Like, it was good. We filmed in New Zealand. It's just all the uh, stunt guys were different sizes. You know, have you noticed that? It's supposed to be mean. You got one guy over here, other guys. Like, can we just get a guy that just looks like me straight across so we don't have to go, Zeal, terrible, this, that, Japanese stunt guys. But uh, it was fun. It, we were in New, I was in New Zealand for a long time, and that's when Tony was running my school. I was so stressed out about the school, I had to come back to the school, so I, I uh, became invisible on Dino Thunder just to go back to, to Rise of the Sun. All right, all right. And then we had a big fire, and then I made them stay open, and ashes were coming. He's like, sir, ashes are coming in the door. I was like, it doesn't matter, dude. Is Chuck E. Cheese open? Yep. Then you all stay open. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. But anyway. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I just want to say, back in the 90s, I grew up watching you, and I, I still remember when you first appeared as the Green Ranger, and it was just amazing back in the day. Thank you. Um, did you expect Transformer or not Transformers, <laughs> wrong show, uh, Power Rangers to get to what it was today? Uh, you know, um, for me, it was just one of those things where I wanted to do the work. It's funny because I do the work at the Comic-Cons, right? That some people don't want to do the work. What is the work? This is the work that you need to do. This is the love you need to have to the fans. Everyone else is getting a five minute call, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. I'm gonna try to put a little work if we have the stage, but put in the work to, to bring the fans and appreciate the fans, you know what I mean? And what's your question again? Uh, back in the 90s, did you expect it to get oh, okay, to... yeah, that's the point. Yeah. So you just gotta live in what you do today to make a better tomorrow. See, I don't worry about the next con, or I don't worry about tomorrow. I just, I didn't worry about the Q&A today. I did the work Wednesday, Thursday, I came out here Friday, and so I can't even think what's after this, but if you put your work and your full energy into each hour, you'll have a better hour and you'll have a better tomorrow. Some people go and they think, oh, I'm gonna, you know, 20 years from now, I didn't wanna be old, man, 20 years, who wants to, th I don't even wanna think 20 years from now. You guys are gonna be real old, and I'm just getting younger, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, JD. How you doing, buddy? I've seen every uh, season, including some of the not good ones like Operation Overdrive and yeah. What was it, Lost, but, Lost Galaxy, or what was it? See, I, I got lost I, after I, that. I said I've seen every show, every uh, okay. every series. Thank you. Series. But anyways, uh, my question is, what is your thoughts on... Uh, 
the Hasbro series of Beast Morphers. He's all excited about it. What do you got to say, dude? You're about to see, you look like you're about to fight him. Is it good? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay, you get, he was like, what about Beast Morphers, dude? What's up? Um, hey, look, every season they do, great. Wish them the luck. I think Power Rangers is going to be around for a long time. We're one show that's never been off the air. You guys, we have never been off the air. People are like, that show's still going? Yes, it's been going. 25 years strong. Ever. Thank you, buddy. So, you know, beast mode. First, I want to say thank you, because you inspired me to do uh, martial arts. Thank you. And it's a passion, and you're right about that. And I just found it, and I kept going. I recently just got my first degree. Nice. But I'm also beginning to train to be an instructor. So I just wanted to ask, like, what was your inspiration to um, keep going? Man, it's funny because I just, that's my personality. I don't know. I got a very strong personality that I just hate quitting and giving up and stopping. And um, I think he, my mom used to say, you're never going to be satisfied in life. And I used to really hate when she said that because she says, you're just never going to be satisfied. But I really, truly believe that in order to be really successful, and we're not talking money. Because I get, this is success is not about how much money you make. Success is, are you doing the job that you're meant to be? Are you doing the job that you're supposed to be doing? And I'll tell you, people are like, no, I really wish I can do this. Well, you can't turn to your, your dream job and want the P, the profit. You gotta have the purpin, purpose, passion. Hi, uh, what would you like, cheese on your burger? Purpose, purpose, passion. Yes, sir, gotta do what you gotta do to get to your A plan. Some people want to deal, I'm gonna be a singer, I tried and I failed and I didn't sell no tickets. Of course you did, because you didn't put the work into it. You have to have your B job doing whatever you gotta to do to support your A dream. It just happens to be that my A dream is karate and acting, so I don't care which one it comes out, but I'm a people's person. I, I would be teaching karate, I love teaching karate, so it's my A job, but so is acting. So you just gotta never give up. Dude, on the end of the day, when you're all alone, you gotta ask yourself, did I do what I was supposed to do? And if you're honest with yourself, you'll be like, no, I didn't. But if you're happy with the turnout and you say, yeah, I've done everything I could, then that's up to you. I'm just really hard on myself. We used to do demos all the time and our demos looked awesome, but I used to be like, ah, oh, it sucked, dude, oh my God. And he'd be like, no, no, it was good. I was like, terrible. And then I watched the review, watched the playback. I was like, ah, it's all right, it looked okay but I'm so picky. I don't just go out there and throw stuff. I want it to look good. Even as good as it gets people hit, I'm so picky. I can do that kick better. I can do this better. Don't, don't be satisfied with where you're at in life. The people that are like, I'm happy with my weight. I'm happy with this job I don't love. Don't be happy. Because I'm down the road, you're gonna end up old, like me. You're gonna end up old and you're gonna realize, I wish I could have fought. I wish I could have jumped out of an airplane. I wish I could have base jumped. I, I wish, I wish, I wish, but you're never going to because now you're just old and you don't want to do it no more. I see, you know, Tammy's grandparents sit there, should have never married this guy. Should have never married you. And I'm like, oh God, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> we probably already are, guys, if you're going to get hit by your wife in the audience. No, I'm just kidding. All right, next question. Hi, nice to meet Hi. you. Um, I just wanted to ask how it was to film in, uh, for Bat in the Sun. No, no, we're gonna take, sorry, just, uh, the guy, last guy in line, raise your hand. Yeah, we're gonna just end it there in your questions. I'm a teacher board, okay? I just wanna get through everyone. I hate cutting people off. Okay, no more questions. No, I'm just kidding, go ahead. <laughs> I'll be fast. Uh, how was it to film for Bat in the Sun? I love filming with Bat in the Sun. Aaron, Joey, everybody that works on the set can make things look like a, a million bucks. Why is Bat in the Sun stuff so good? He's got a purpose and he's passionate and he's doing what he has to do to become the next big director, bottom line. And when he does, he'll probably use me for stuff just like he did on Transformers and, and uh, Bloodshot and all that stuff, you know? Thank you, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jason, good to see you again. What's up, buddy? Um, all, the, all the Rangers, they all fight with different weapons and you fought with different weapons on the show. What's your actual favorite weapon to fight with? Well, I don't play the flute often. But when I do, the dragon sword comes out of the water. <laughs> That's my answer. And it made all the high school kids in band like 
Yeah, I play flute and... Hello, just gotta Hi. say, you know, thank you for being you. Oh, thank you, buddy. <laughs> um, my question is with um, the new Power Rangers movie, what was your opinion of it being so much different than the TV show? Going to like live action on the actual like TV screen? And then obviously the, the bad thing that they did with Goldar, did not like that, but what was your opinion of the movie overall? Sometimes we gotta try new things. You know what I mean? It's 2018? <laughs> It's 2018, you gotta try new stuff. You know, you have to understand that us being kids, the movie making is a different thing now. If we did what we did on that movie, even in, even in the first movie, we had to make things like digital. We had to, I was thinking no, but we had to. So kids expect so much today, and so do we, we expect so much. And it's just costing a lot of m uh, money because we're so used to stuff, so they did have to try something new. As far as the cast, they should have used more me and Amy, to be honest. It would have been great as a, as a father, you know, mother to one of the kids. Definitely. To say the Green Ranger on the end would have <laughs> captivated the audience more. Who knows what they're going to do now. But I think Hasbro, Saban, everybody's seeing who, where this fan base is coming from. You know, I'm like, I help, I, my fans, I hope more fan base than Saban and all those guys put together. But it's because you guys, I'm showing love. When has someone came out and liked your picture and said, hey, thanks for watching the movie that came from an official account. You know? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, what was the hardest season you ever had to film? Truthfully, the hardest season for me to film as an actor was when the other guys were replaced because we had to like shoot body doubles and when they left, they just left. And it was hard because I, I, I wasn't into filmmaking so I didn't really know how it worked but we had to put a guy in a red shirt over here. That was not him. Then we had to put a guy in a black, then we had to get a girl. So it was just such a, a mess to try to piece it together. As an actor, don't piece anything together. Just trust the director. But for me, I wanted to piece things together. That was the hardest season, the transition between, you know, because I like the old cast, but I love the new cast too. But sometimes when you watch a show, uh, like I Dream a Genie or these other shows, and they replace the husband, like you just don't, like you, you're like dumb that you don't know they replaced the husband, it's weird. You know, so replacing people, that was the hardest season. It's piecing it together and trying to, trying to film. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I had a question about your MMA, because um, I'm a big fan of that as well as your acting. But how, when you know that you are going to face someone, do you mentally prepare yourself? Oh, um, well, you just got to do your work. You know, I tell people, I tell everybody, actors, everybody, you're all worried, everybody's worried about other stuff, just sharpen your sword. Don't worry about nothing else, focus on your sword, focus on your skill, focus on your ability, because when you have a sharp, sharp sword and you go to battle, you'll fight. People are too worried and you know what, they look at their sword and then they go to battle and they never sharpen their sword. Keep your skills sharp. That's just what I do, I have to, try to keep things sharp, be one step ahead of everyone else. You wanna be an actor, don't ask how to be famous, you should be like, this is your purpose, this is your passion, I'll work for free, I've been training, so when you get a, sh a shot, you'll have a shot. Like, UFC, if somebody trained, no, I can't. don't give me that, never mind. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I have both a comment and a question. Okay. Um, green was my favorite color growing up, so naturally the Green Waver Ranger was my most favorite Ranger, of course. Um, I remember when Rita took your powers with the candle temporarily, and then when you came back, your powers were kind of failing back and forth. Um, that was really disappointing and stressful as a child watching that. I know, dude. Um, I, I want to ask you, as an actor and as your role in the show, how did that affect you? Did that make you feel some sort of way that your powers were temporary? <laughs> no. It's, a, it's the weirdest thing, man. I look at it now. I was young, you know what I mean? Like, I was super young in the show. 19, 20, I was doing the show. I didn't think about how it would affect kids. Now, honestly, like, I didn't think that at all. I was like, a TV show, powers are gone. <laughs> oh, oh, I died, dude. You know, I went, I went to therapy because of <laughs> Well, I'm a, I tell you, dude, <laughs> Jenna, the world, the wizardly place, or whatever that's called, she was watching it, and someone lost power on there. I don't know what it was, but she was just so disappointed, and so, like, and I felt bad for her, like, what's wrong? Who's when lost the power, she's so affected by that. I had no clue how y'all traumatized, that's why. That's why I came back as the White Ranger, you know, and that was why it was the highest rated episode. We're the still the number one kid show in the world. 
uh, yeah, man, we traumatized you. I'm sorry. Thank you, buddy. Hey, I was traumatized too, man. Kimberly wrote me a letter, but then I got another chick, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just saying. Made me forget about Kimberly for a while. Hi, uh, I just want to say it was awesome seeing you as the Green and White Ranger because uh, I was a big Godzilla fan growing up, so when we saw you as a Green Ranger with the Dragon Sword, that was awesome. And the White Ranger is tired of Godzilla too. But, uh, Godzilla. Question, yeah. I like Godzilla too. Uh, my question is, is uh, what was your mindset from going from a character from the Power Rangers that's very martial art based to doing Bloodshot was more uh, weapons and guns? Dude, I love Bloodshot. I really love that character, and here's why. I always wanted to be a comic book character, and I never was with Power Rangers. Com like, Power Rangers wasn't a comic book theme, but I wanted to be a comic book character, and I actually was. Comic book was Bloodshot in 1992, one year prior to Power Rangers, and I was hired for one scene, and my character died on the show, and it ended up being in the whole entire thing. So Bloodshot became popular. I was kind of, Bloodshot was like Tommy. Hey, you want to do this one little episode? Sure, and then it turned out as something bigger. But it was great. Tommy don't have guns or weapons. It's a PG-13. It's a PG. It's a P or G, whatever show. So Bloodshot was, it was cool. But there was things on Bloodshot, I'm just going to let you know, I did not want to say. It's cuss words, so I just wouldn't want to say. Sometimes when directors and people say, I, say, I really can't say that. How come it's in the script? I got kids, man. I look up to me. Awesome. Thank you very much. Hey, Jason, how are you? Um, my question is, what's your favorite uh, movie scene from the movie 23 years ago? What was your favorite scene? Uh, the, you know the bow staff? Where I was fighting the guys with the bow staff? I say it wasn't my favorite, that was the most frustrating scene that did. we did take after take after take after take after take. Like, one more time, I'm thinking, why don't you do it one more time? Let me see you do it. It was like 10, 16. The whole entire thing. That was fun being in the, in the war together and fighting. Um, I like work with IBUs. I think that, you know, when the water blew up behind me and Amy we were sitting on the rock, that took forever to shoot that. You all don't really understand what it takes to shoot a movie like that. We waited forever for the water to, like, go through this blowhole. Forever we were waiting. And uh, it never happened for hours and hours, so I decided to walk and look inside the blowhole, what everyone was looking for. And I just dropped the mic, got wet, had to go to makeup, and they're like, stay away from the hole. So, uh... That was another traumatizing scene. So that, that scene where we're on the rock and the water goes whoosh, cost a lot of money to get that shot. But we don't think of it like that. It's just, we, we watch the movie now and think when the water comes, how long it took us to get that shot. And I looked down the hole, I slipped, broke the guy's mic, I was a wet, my hair was like, whoosh, you know, nappy, it wasn't straight no more. I had to go to it was bad. Bad deal. Don't look at a blowhole, kids. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Just curious, uh, what sword did you like better? Dragon Zord or the White Tiger? I, I kind of grew up with the, with the Dragon Zord, kind of lived in the water. I'm a little kid. And I like them both. People always ask, what do I choose? I don't have to choose because they're all mine. They're like, what's the favorite team of Power Rangers so I keep neutral? I don't want to get anyone in trouble or hurt people's feelings. I'm like, let's do the White Ranger, do the Green Ranger, do uh, Turbo, do Zeo. Now forget Turbo, we'll do Zeo, Red, we'll do Dino Thunder Black, and then we're Dragon. That's my team. Like, what? It's all mine. I don't have to worry about it. I built my own team. It's all hard to miss. I can get Turbo, but Turbo we had to share. We had to share costumes. Uh, first off, uh, welcome back to Las Vegas. Hope you're enjoying your stay. Uh, my question for you today is all the martial arts styles that you know, which one is your favorite? Uh, Muay Thai. I, Muay Thai? I, I, I like definitely. Sorry, Jimmy, I'm trying to get through here. I got to teach you to break a board real quick, and then we're good. No, no, we're not. We're going to get through the two. I'm going to break a board, and then we're going to, we have some other people coming in. Okay. Yeah. I'm a nine-year-old. Somehow, I've seen every single episode of Mighty Morphin like 90 times. Good boy. And nine years old, seen it 90 times. I've Attaboy. seen um, Dino Thunder, and I've seen most of the episodes of Turbo Man. And I've seen the movie from 23 years ago, too. And, uh, I've heard a lot of stuff. So, like, with Alpha 5 and, like, the base in and all of those things, like, in Like when you lost your power, 
from the talking sword. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I was a joke. I was kidding. Jeez. Talking sword could get on, could get annoying at times. You know, you just want to be left alone. It's like, hey, what are you doing? It's hanging on your hip the whole entire time. That's why I say it's kind of marriage. Sometimes you can disconnect from the disconnect from the hip. You know what I mean? No, I'm not. Stay away from like girls and give me trouble. One there was a, you know that scene when, uh, and I also remember that stage in the Power Rangers series in Mighty Morphin when you got like ninja, when you got like the ninja armor or something. We gotta wrap wait. it up real quick though, man. I hate Sama, you I remember that scene where he was like, wait, what the heck are you doing? Why are you doing this? Was right. that was that the annoying scene? Was that the annoying scene? All, all, all the scenes were good. We just got someone else coming in, man. Give me five though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, well, well last question, uh, then bring those boards up real quick. So the original Saber Tooth Tiger Trinity, the Yellow Ranger, was my favorite. I just had a question. Did you guys ever make an episode dedicated to her? No, but people are making artwork dedicated to her and signing boxes dedicated to her. Awesome. So I definitely like to see that. So uh, I'll your also, um, are you going to be at the nerd tonight, the after party? Uh, probably not. Uh, probably right. not. <laughs> I, I might, you know, my little girl. She will have to see what she. I say little, but she's fifteen. Want to help right, me break this board, Tony? Okay. Right, so let me walk you through this real quick. World's quickest board breaking Yes, it will be. Right Jimmy, we're getting in there in a second. Okay, so right, Tony's, like I said, he's uh, one of the master black belts at my school, so we hold the board. We've done this plenty of times. Um, so what you want to do real quick, these are practice boards, okay, with uh, century boards. We also go up a little bit higher into like different thickness of boards. Then we're going to have to clear this really quick, okay? So what you're going to do is you place your hand up here like a palm heel, okay? And when you want to like bring it back, Especially when you want a palm heel, you want to like, oh shoot, get another board. Let's just do another one real quick. Because you really want to like, you got to test the board. You got to test them out. Hold up. All right, hold this board. Jimmy, we're going. All right, so what you want to do is you want to come up with your palm heel. Okay, I this one here. Okay, palm heel, and then you want to drive through the board. Okay, and you got to key out. Super loud like that, okay? Make sure you hit with the palm of the hand. So we're going to count. We're going to go. One, and then you're gonna go back, and we're gonna go two, and then on the third one, you're gonna do it with the key. I count with me, and then we're gonna be out of here, okay? Here we go, and touch the board. One, touch the board to you too fast, man. Give it time, one more time. Slow. One, two, hold it. When you get ready, you're gonna break through it with a super loud key. I ready, go! Yes! Thank you so much. Appreciate it, thank you. Guys, I'll be at the table, got photo ops, let me get a quick video. Jimmy, thanks for taking the time. Guys, we've got another. Q&A in here, so we got to get out of here pretty quick. I took a lot of time up, but I uh, want to thank everybody from amazing Las Vegas. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. It's Morphin' Time. All right, guys, I'll see you at the table with Q&A, okay? I mean, uh, yeah, photo op.